Okay, so GitHub installed, Adam installed, uh, and they're synced. I've, we've opened that directory in Adam so that we've got all yeah. our files there. Basically, uh, you know how DJ, do you call him DJ or? You can call Dev. him Dev, I call him Dev. Dev. Um, he was talking about blocks and the TPL files. Um, basically, a TPL file it builds on well, there's a base file for a HTML file that a HTML file will call to pull blocks from. As you can see there, you have a head block with percentage that makes it a variable, so you can call it within a HTML block. Uh, and basically, as it says there, anything within those blocks will be placed inside your HTML file. So if we go to your index file, see how it has head block and it it actually calls the TPL file right up the top. So you're calling that base.tpl, which then allows you to call those same variables that are declared within that TPL file in your HTML file. So you see how it has percentage head block, head block, and then end block. Basically, you're just calling that block file, or that part of that base TPL file, that's called block head, or head block, sorry. And then within there, you can basically place any kind of head, uh, HTML information, whatever you like. So we'll put in title, steal me, title, save. Oh, and also in Adam, if you make any changes, you can see on the left hand side they go orange to say that you've made changes to the files. So in that base CPF file, I'll put in the title, say steal me. So whenever we go to that index page for this Google app, you'll, it'll have up top steal me, obviously. If we go to, so that's obviously not running, run it. That's, now that's not the same project, we'll have to add. That's cool. Uh, no, desktop, wasn't it? Desktop, yeah. Under GitHub. There it is. Yeah. And demo. Demo. Cool. Okay, so we add that. So that's pointing it to the directory we've just put all that stuff into. Yep. So then basically we'll go run. Make sure we've. We've got a green arrow. Now, I know most of you, my guys are going to be confused by the fact that when we write HTML code, what would you do to have a look at your HTML code? You'd open up the file directly. No, you just click on the index file, open up an IE or you know, Chrome, and you say, ah, oh, there it is. You know, and this is what we were doing in class. Great, we've written some HTML. We've checked, saved it, checked it. Yep, there it is. But of course, when we're doing, using a programming language or something that's got anything to do with a server, that can't compile in the browser, you know, it actually needs to go somewhere to get compiled, to be run on the server. So what, what why would, this is where Apple, App Engine comes in. Um, it is the environment for us to then, it creates basically a little web server on our computer for us to check as emulating that that's a server. And when we're ready to actually launch it, then that's when you click the deploy button and that's when it would send it to the Google server so that it would go live to the world. But until that point, we just sort of want to browse on our local web server, our local environment. Yep. And I know that's, that's sort of one more step complicated than just clicking save on the index. And, but this is when we get to programmatic sort of level, you, you can't just do it that way. So. Yeah, so obviously, uh, Carol, as Carol just said, if you try and use these TPL files, in just a general HTML web server, it won't work mm. because HTML has no concept of those variables that are placed within it. Yeah. So the App Engine then allows the HTML files to actually recognize those variables and actually use them in a usable way and then interpret them, obviously. Yeah. So it ties it all together, stitches it all together, that kind of stuff. Now, just out of 
interest. Yep. Where do you think, guys, that it's dragged this name from? Why has it put that name in there? Isn't that the same name? Yes. Name? But where is it come? What file in particular? Because we copied um, Dev's files. Yes, it is because we copied Dev's files. But why? How does it know? What file in particular yeah, is it getting? So if you guys have well, that actually, good. that directory open, go into Adam and I guess fall in the file and tell me yeah. where it is. Because it's in one of those files in that directory. Yeah, and then Daniel got it over here. He yeah. He's under the, that. YAML. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So at the top of that, it's got that piece of text there which identifies it so that when we click later on, deploy. And this is, for us, this is not going to work because if we want to deploy this, we'd be overriding Dev's app, which we're not going to do. But of course, we have to log into that, so don't worry, you're not, not at any risk of doing yeah. that. But later on, we're going to have to go in and change that app.yaml value there to whatever, you know, if I wanted to recode it as Wagga coders, I would have to go in there and do that. Yeah, that obviously way. then within your Google Apps Sash panel, you have to have the same app ID that runs in here for mm. them to be able to deploy it up there. Yeah. Now, how are we with this? Questions about what's going on here to this point before you, anyone sort of switches off and goes to sleep in their head? We're in, we're in a team. Us, yep. us, uh, yep. So does that just mean Butch only has to do it and me and Max don't have to? When it comes time to... Yeah, so. When it gets hard to, I guess, working as a team, you all use the same GitHub. So you guys can work on the same directory, make changes, and work on the same project as one, but then work on it at different levels. So when they log into their GitHub with their different accounts? Yeah, so you can obviously, uh, up the top in GitHub, you have two types of repositories. You can create one, uh, or you can have a clone. So you can search for repositories that are actually sitting up in GitHub and that kind of thing and pull them down. So those three guys, you could share them between you. You can work on them individually. Uh, however, make sure that you're not... Sometimes it can get confused. If you if you guys are modifying the same font, you try and lodge changes at the same time, it may, it may conflict. So just be aware of that. Uh, but getting back to actually viewing that Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Yeah. I'm actually incorrect. It hasn't thrown. Steal me up the top. Oh, yeah, right. So, in. Ah! You see, can wait. anyone tell me why? Yeah, wrong? I can see. You're in the body. Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Good. Good mistake. Uh, so yeah, obviously if we put in the head block, save changes. Now I don't know if you guys do it, but if I make a change to something, I'll generally restart an application just in case there's something you're seeing in the background that's still holding that value. Wait until it gives you the green button. Still hasn't I'm not sure whether you started the right one there. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Do you have to commit the changes? Um, you shouldn't need to commit the changes because that's actually committing changes up to Git. Okay. Not, not uh, actually onto your apps. That's when you, yeah, when you want to share it. So, yeah. yeah, after you've tested it to make sure it worked, then you commit it, sort of thing. Yeah, that kind of thing. So. So you're in the TPL file there, yeah. and you've got that in your block head block, and then block head block. Try putting something in the body to see if, I mean that bit's obviously getting ported over okay because it's getting the form up there. Uh, yeah, but the reason that you get that form there is because that's actually encoded into your... Um, oh, it's actually in the HTML file. Yes. What if you tried grabbing that stuff and putting it in the T? Or is that what, are we using the, are we using, why would have Deb put that straight into the HTML file, not into the TPL file? 
because uh, it's a template form. You have to, so you wouldn't put put a logon page in a template form. In a template file because it's not going to be universal across every page. Mm. So you may as well just put in whatever unique unique HTML file code into that page, and then call whatever you need. So your head blocks, your body, um, yeah. meta blocks, that kind of thing. Uh, Jared, yep. put it above the um, style sheet links outside of those. Yes. Areas. Yes. Is it because it's inside from here, yeah, right? That makes it, sense. As Dev said, they get replaced by whatever. It is, yeah, right. yeah. Very smart. Well done, Brandon. Cool. So if you want to have a crack at doing that, feel free to. Hey guys, just play around, see what you can do with it. What I've been doing. Why don't we try and grab something from um, Bootstrap and put something in oh, there? I still haven't got yeah. Bootstrap. Well, why don't, uh, I reckon I could do that with you. Let's go go to Bootstrap. Oh, it's actually it's already open up there in the middle. Yep. Um, and so on the right hand side there, let's try and stick a button in there or something. So. Let's pick a button. What sort of button would we like? Uh, I like the danger one. Okay, it's danger nice. button. Okay, so let's find that danger button in that code there. It's the one at the bottom. Yeah, it's that one. one. So so copy it's that. Good. And we'll go back into there. Now we're not going to put it in our TPL file. We're going to put it in our HTML file, aren't we? Because it's not going to be a. It's not a template item. It's actually a individual item for our. Yeah. That. Would people agree with that stuff? Yeah, that would make sense. And so if we stuck that in there, hopefully now we'll see an extra button on our... Negatory on the danger button. 90, 80, that's the right one. And the. Because oh. you've put it inside the form, maybe? No? What? What, have you, what are you thinking of? Uh, see the uh, actual directory up top? No. We're in the auto coders directory, yeah, right. That's yeah, something to do so with. I was actually using the wrong folder. That's okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's probably my fault from before. I reckon I probably had that loaded up just sitting there. Yeah, I shouldn't have assumed. Yeah. Cool. Here let's, we go. Let's try this head thing again. But inside the block or outside the block? find out. Okay. Hmm. Did you get it working? Yeah, it worked outside. Outside the block? Yeah. What about inside? Okay. So now that I hit and save, that working stuff in changes. <laughs> yeah, right. Good work. You actually really shouldn't have to restart your services. Uh, Google Apps Engine is actually smart enough to detect changes in files and it should just repopulate. But it's just how I do those, how I work. So, yep, it doesn't work inside those blocks. As you can so it should replace local host up the top there. Yeah, it should yeah. say steal. So if we put it up, it's, uh, oh. let's not put a button. <laughs> Probably not possible. Mm. I'll actually also put that button in if you like. Yeah. So, for my guys, once again, you don't want to start doing more than one or two little things before you check it. If you start doing five you know, items of coding yeah. in there and then 
don't check it and then you click the go button and you just it'll get way too confusing. Just do one change, check it, one change, check it. Hey, there we go. So now we have a danger and it says steal up the And it top. says steal up in the tab at the top of the title. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. So why don't we uh, go, do you want to call it quits at that and spend 15 minutes getting everyone's yep. head around that? And then once you've got that sort of set up where you can put in a button or put in then you can actually customise it towards your app. So you might say, well, I'm not going to have any buttons there. I'm just going to, I'm going to make this form here a user login form right, and start customising it the way you want it. Excellent. Good work. Thanks, Jared.